they lie opposite. They're adverse. So along with the flesh, the desire of the flesh is going to be the response of the spirit. Like, you know, you cannot go down there. You know you cannot do that. But look, you know, you've been working all week, 72 hours. I mean, you deserve, you know, a little relaxation, man. Just, you know, just relax yourself. Enjoy yourself. Take a little time for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Just go have a drink with, you know, just chill. You know, ain't nothing going to go down. You know, it's just a little casual situation, man. Lighten up. You know, you, you if you do that, not me that. Don't do that. I'm telling you, you need to make the move because you know it's been a hard week. Don't do that. Then we got to make a choice. He says, "I present to you life and good, death and evil. Choose." See, when we get when we got baptized, we got brought back to the place that Adam was before the fall. Whereas now we have the faith of Christ and we have a choice. See, when we were dead in trespasses and sin, adding sin upon sin and partying like it was 1999 or 2012, then that was one thing. But when we got born again, now we have the conflict. Now we have the choice. We can choose to have faith and believe, or we can choose to not believe. Every time we yield ourselves to the desires of the flesh and of the mind, that's a, a straight act of unbelief. That's a straight, that's straight putting your faith in demonic spirits. That's called straight idolatry. That's worshiping an idol. That's just like if you just went and bowed down before a dog head gold statue with a baby burning in the center of it, and you just said, I worship you statue. It's the same thing when we yield to the desires of an evil entity. He says, um, and these are contrary to one to the other so that you wouldn't do the things that you normally would if the spirit wasn't dealing with you. It says, but if you be led of the spirit, that is to lead by implication to bring, drive, go specifically past time, induce, be, bring forth, carry. If you are led by the spirit, carried by the spirit, influenced by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now that's crazy right there. He says you're not under the law. So if you are not led of the spirit, then you're under the law of Moses. Un being under the law of Moses means that you are condemned because for every act, every violation of the law carries a penalty. Mm. And you're guilty of that every time you yield to your flesh. You're under the law. You you're under the judgment. You owe a debt. So it's just like if, like, when I got I got locked up, right? Now, I've been getting tickets since I was, like, 17. I'm 50. And now they got some kind of thing where ain't no statute of limitations. So every ticket, I used to drive a cab for about five years. So I got a gazillion tickets when I was driving a cab. Every ticket that I ever got, I was standing before the judge it was like, you owe $15,000. Uh, if you don't give me 750 bucks by the end of the day, you're going away and you're not coming back here until the 23rd. It was like, it was like the 25th. They said, you're coming back here the 23rd if you don't come up with $750. By then, so I owed for every violation. That's what it means to be under the law. And if you try to serve the law, 
Shaq, like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be a good Israelite. I'm going to be good. I'm going to do good. And you keep breaking the law, you're guilty for every offense. Because now uh, you don't have a right to a, to a, to a defender, a public uh, defender. You know, you automatically waive that right when you try to do the law yourself. You become your own lawyer. Now, the charges are going to be brought up on you uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, so-and-so on July, then they slept with so-and-so's wife, adultery, uh, so-and-so uh, stole so-and-so theft. You know, every crime, every act is going to come up in that judgment. So he's saying, if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, I'm not, I'm not living according to my own self or fleshly carnal behind self trying to go to church and serve the most high and act like I'm righteous and have like a, a little religious air. And, you know, I say words a certain kind of way, depending on what congregation I come from or I dress a certain kind of way or I got my Israelite garment on or. Now, I'm not in the flesh. Now, I'm being led of the spirit. The spirit is like, stop looking at Charlie's woman because that ain't cool. Yes, Lord. So I'm going to look the other way. I'm going to go out of the way to make sure, I mean, well, I ain't going to get all into that. But anyway, so he says, now, if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. All right, so now he's going to show you some of the manifestations of the carnal nature. So the sinful nature that we all possess in our bodies through our father, Adam, the fallen, sinful son of perdition, Satan, blood-drinking, uh orgy with men and women at the same time, pork eating shrimp at the same time, drinking drunk, partying. All of us got that nature in us. All of us got that nigga. Excuse me. I said I won't say a word. Please forgive me. Bruh, I forgot about that. But that carnal nature that horrible manifestation of Satan dwelling in our DNA. Like, we're corrupt. So automatically, you see something on, on TV, and you'll feel your nature rise. You know what I'm saying? You'll see something on a billboard or a girl walk down the street with a chest out or Anything, and you'll feel the tinglings of the flesh. You got to know what that is, because the flesh automatically, when that's going down, the spirit is right there. The spirit is right there. So now, when we're walking in the spirit, uh, we're sensitive, our conscience. We have, we talked about the baptism and cleansing our con conscience. Our co, our co perception, our moral, whatever that thing is that gives us morality in the spirit is awakened and it's fixed, it's repaired. So now our moral jaw is, is working. And whenever Satan and sin manifests itself, that thing is right there like, come on, you know that ain't cool. Wow. Just put that jaw back and pay the $10. Come on. Like, you walk out the store, it's like, oh, man, I just stole this. Now, it was a time I will be like, that's the one time I just saved, like, $80. Now, I can't do that. I, I'm like, oh, man, I forgot. I go back. I go back. Excuse me. I forgot to pay for this. Sometimes people are like, well, man, just go ahead, man. I mean, I'm like, no, I got to pay for this. Because the spirit is dealing with me. And if I don't pay for this, I'm going to get jacked up. I don't want to get jacked up. So please take this money. You know what I'm saying? So you got to. 
I'm talking about it gets so intricate. I'm riding down the highway. I threw a cup out the window. The spirit was like, man, you know you need to go get that cup. I'm like, oh, come on, Lord. All right. I pull over, walk back down the road, get the cup. But my conscience is cool. See, because you can't violate your conscience. And however it's come, the more you yield to the spirit of Christ that's dwelling in you, the more you give in to the, to the, to the, uh, to the sun that's in you. It's something that's happening. It's really happening. And at first you're going to think that you're tripping because it's going to be hard. You're going to be hold up. Is that me? Is that the spirit? Like, you know, I don't know if that's me or the spirit. Trust me. The more you listen, the sharper your perception gets and you grow to the point to where you can discern good and evil. That's how you know that you're a spiritual adult. When you can, you can discern good and evil and just pick your life. Like somebody might be like, uh, hi, this is so-and-so called from so-and-so. You'd be like, hello, Satan. Like you just know, I'm like, okay, how's this going to go? You know, you deal with situations, you just, you just know. And then you learn how to, to, you learn how to be sensitive to the vibrations that you feel in from people because everything is based off of vibrations and frequencies and you can feel it. And like you might catch a bad, bad vibration from somebody or something. You got to learn to examine all your situations when you're going through daily things. Like if you go through something and you just sense a deep vibe, like from a little encounter that you had, you got to kind of go back over that in your mind. Like, hold up. Why don't I like that person? Like what's happening there? Or I don't like how they came off when when they asked me, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, the more you start realizing that that um, everything is spiritual, everything is connected, nothing is coincidental. You know what I'm saying? You know. Let me read this. It says, all right, now if you be led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. So now, all right, you go over to your bull's house, you know, you, after work, because you know, you, you got to stop and pick up a tool. And his wife come down the steps and all of a sudden, you know, one of her breasts automatically just jump out, but she put it back in real quick, and you catch that. And you feel that in your body. And you're like, ah, that was deep. And then you might catch, look back up, and you catch her looking at you some kind of way. you like, hold up. I know I ain't tripping. Let me not try to trip her. You got to automatically know that that's the now now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery. If you got a feeling, a vibration of adultery, you know that that's Satan. So you gotta automatically run from that like Joseph. Fornication. That is unlawful sex. Sex with minors, sex with animals, sex with the same sex.